Oh no, it's video cop! You're one of those homosexuals or something, huh? I'm no homosexual, pal. <laughs> If you had to take a guess, how do you think a movie would turn out that started production in 1986, wasn't finished until 1989, and was not properly released until 1992? Go on, take a guess. By film critic and technical standards, Winter Beast is now officially the worst movie I've seen in my life. It's between this and Thanks Killing 3, but I'm not gonna rewatch that to make a decision. Lucky for me though, it is so bad it's good. But there is so much bad about this. I'm gonna do my best to keep this video short because if I were to point out each and every flaw and ridiculous aspect, it would take too long. Winter Beast is directed by a one-time director and all the actors, are also one-time actors. In fact, now that I think about it, the movie comes off more like a student film project than anything else. The plot is basically about evil totem poles who are killing people in a small backwoods resort type town. It's up to head ranger Bill Whitman and others to find out what is causing people to turn up missing and stop the variety of evil creatures killing people. Sounds okay, right? Starting out, the movie makes absolutely no sense. Just watch this. I'm not even gonna edit or cut anything out. No. Yeah. Are you all right? Yeah. So that guy who woke up from a nightmare is Ranger Whitman. I don't think it ever makes sense how or why he had those nightmares, but then it cuts to real life with him and another ranger named Mr. Stillman, and they are discussing another park ranger named Slappy Tello who has been missing. Then there's this other guy named Dick Sargent who ends up tagging along to solve the mysteries of everything. Poor guy has a hard time making friends though. You didn't happen to go under the moniker of Olger at one time, did you? Well, it means nothing to me. I'm just trying to make conversation. Bite it, will you, buddy? A major flaw of Winter Beast is how it doesn't tie in many scenes. Most of the kill scenes by the demonic totem poles and other creatures, they kind of just happen randomly. Like this one girl who is casually undressing herself, only for an evil stop motion version of Groot to attack her. <laughs> The stop motion is a reason I think this is sort of a film school project, but I don't know. Besides the special effects, the music in the movie is actually kind of cool. It's composed by, I believe his name is Michael Perlstein, who also created the music from the movies Hollywood Chainsaw Hookers and The Deadly Spawn. The story continues as Mr. Whitman struggles with Mr. Sheldon, who runs a lodge in the park. Whitman wants to close the lodge for a short period of time so they can do a full investigation and so that no other people come up missing. So if you hate bad video editing, you will cringe at this movie. Take this scene for example. Thanks, buddy. Hey, I'm just trying to make conversation here. Well, you're sure doing a shitty job. <laughs> Here. Who the hell are you? Okay, let's go over that again. Mr. Stillman is at a table drinking a beer and take note at the waiter in the blue flannel shirt helping him out. Then a fight breaks out and cuts to the waiter falling down, I guess as a result of the fight, but then it does an immediate cut of him standing up straight with Mr. Sheldon on the other side of the room. Seriously, this thing is baffling. 
Then there's a scene where a character named Charlie Perkins shows Whitman a relic that has to do with the evil totem poles. Look at it. What does that look like? It even has veins. It, it could just be the tooth from any large animal, or maybe even somebody made it. But if that's not the actual relic, then what was it? Anyway, our next round of victims are these lovely ladies who just want to go hiking. That thing is actually kind of terrifying. It's like a birth defect Bigfoot or something. A while later, more crappy video editing and scenes that I don't understand. Charlie Perkins and this girl Barbara are having a discussion about the evil native relics and there's a monster of some sort creeping outside, but we never see it and nobody dies. There's an earthquake and a blue light that appears, but nothing happens. It then cuts to this guy rappelling down a mountainside with another stop motion monster and it's so awful it would make the 1933 King Kong embarrassed. <laughs> And then Ranger Bradford is out in the woods all alone for some reason and comes across a grave of Sheldon's dad or grandpa or somebody. So when I first saw this, I thought this was the Winter Beast. But later on, there's a different demon monster that has actual horn on its head, unlike this one. But this one that came out of the grave never dies, so I don't know. I probably didn't follow the movie close enough to understand some of my issues, but I already know so much doesn't add up. And as you would guess, Sheldon is revealed to be sort of behind the evil events. There's a scene where he fingers Ranger Bradford under her skin and slaps her. Then the only legitimately creepy scene in the movie happens. Next, when Charlie and Mr. Whitman discover more details of what's going on, they make a smart decision. Let's get the hell out of here. Let's get the hell out of here. Sheldon, this is insane. You can't control it. Just like your ancestors and the Indians couldn't. They could only stop it before the stronger demons came through. Yes, but I understand now what they didn't. They're summoned here by their image. That's the key. But why? Okay, so like the beginning scene of the movie, try to make sense of this uncut, unedited scene. <laughs> Did you catch that jump cut edit? This is a great example of how cheaply made this is. But I mean, come on, how can you really hate it? Moving on. <laughs> so that scene was pretty intense, right? Well, apparently not, because after Sheldon's head melts into flames, it cuts to, I guess, a few days later and Mr. Whitman and Charlie are back to their normal lives. Charlie calls Whitman up and casually asks how business is. Like, really? How did we go from face melting to an immediate pass in time like everything is basically back to normal? Whitman says he's going to cut down the totem pole and for some reason, Charlie isn't a fan of that. You gotta be kidding me. There's no way in hell I'm gonna wait a week to get rid of that thing. Bill, I'm asking you as a friend. You don't know the value of that. Great idea, Charlie. It's not like faces are melting and deformed Bigfoots aren't killing people or anything. But then later on, one of the characters, I think Mr. Stillman from the beginning, tries to take down the totem pole only to be attacked, but he actually gets away. Then it immediately cuts to daylight and Stillman and Whitman are hanging around outside at various houses. Again, none of this is making sense. Why are they here? What are they doing? But then... This is some straight up low budget kaiju movie stuff. So, so, so bad, but so, so, so good. Then more confusion because while Whitman survives, it cuts to Charlie and he runs into town or wherever this is up to a fence of chickens with a sign that reads, do not place fingers or hands through fence. What does this even have to do with anything? 
Oh yeah, a giant demonic chicken vulture. That totally explains things. The chicken vulture doesn't kill him, so he decides to destroy the totem pole, but then that doesn't even do any good. There's now only eight minutes left of the movie, but it's a long eight minutes. It has to be the most dragged out ending to a horror film I've seen. The Winter Beast is chasing Whitman and he is running so slow. I don't know how he escapes, but he does. Then Charlie happens to show up with a car for the rescue, but not until he falls out of it mid-drive. I'm cutting out a lot of these final eight minutes, but it finally ends when Charlie finds some weird totem pole face prop or whatever that thing is. And Whitman shoots it, causing the Winter Beast's head to explode. And that's basically it. Let's do a quick flashback of all the various monsters. There was an evil Groot, a birth defect Bigfoot, an unknown mystery monster, alien head totem pole, Winter Beast part one without horns, Baby Skull Winter Beast Part 2 crawling out of a man's chest, and Full Grown Winter Beast 2 with horns, Second Alternative Totem Pole, Kaiju Dinosaur, and Giant Chicken Vulture. There you have it. This is Winter Beast. I have absolutely no idea what I watch or how this ever got made, but if you have seen this, I am begging you, please leave a comment and discuss anything and everything about this completely bizarre piece of Z-grade cinema. How about some breakfast? Got great fresh eggs and hash browns. Look, sweet, I didn't come up here to marry you.